hello guys and welcome back to my channel civil construction and tutor and in this video i'll show you how to design a combined footing using this excel set so basically i have already uploaded a video in the youtube uh, regarding the design of the combined footing that is the theoretical part as well as a numerical design but in this video i'll just show you how to design using this excel sheet so for this excel sheet you can go to the link in the description box and request for the access and you will get a mail from us regarding the purchase of this excel sheet so basically in this excel sheet you have to input uh, in the data that is the highlighted cell only that is the yellow cell only and accordingly you will get the output that is the size of the uh, footing that is dimension of the footing grade of concrete grade of steel and the thickness of footing as well as the longitudinal bars dimension to start with the very first thing we have to enter here is the service load so if this is the combined footing so in some case the column might be flush to the property line or in some cases we might have a uh, two column that are not flush to the property line accordingly we have to provide this that is the distance of column from the property line so for now let us assume this is the combined footing this is column a and this is column b so according to that we will provide the load and data related to the column so if we see in all uh, in the autocad drawing so i have already uh, designed this combined footing just i am showing you uh, this side of the building is flush to the property line so this will be column a and this will be column b and accordingly we will take the load from etabs so in the etabs file we will go to the plan and we will take the load that is the reaction at the base so here you will have base reactions and we will consider reaction that is dead load and live load only and we will check for fz mx and my are generally negligible for such loads you can see over here 1 minus 3 so we will just consider this as we have seen that this is the side where the column is flush to the property line and we will provide a combined footing for this too so the span is less so we can provide a combined footing rather than providing a strap beam so 2.1 is the center to center distance so let us consider the critical uh, columns so for now let us consider this 308 and 474 service load of the column a that is smaller one which is basically 308 and 474 so 310 let us take and this as 475 column dimension so 14 inches column for now so 350 mm 350 mm column b also 350 mm and 350 mm grade of concrete let us consider 20 mpa that is m20 grade of concrete grade of steel as fe500 distance of column a from the property line so for now it is flush to the property line so it will be zero else you can go for one meter if it is available so something like this will happen and accordingly we have to provide the size of the footing that is the projection on the other either side for now it is zero so in this side it is computed in terms of fit and center to center distance between two columns so from ETFs you can take this 2.10 allowable bearing capacity of soil at site so for now let us consider it is 130 you can get this from the report as well from the soil report now length and width of the footing so basically the dimension of the footing is considered in such a way that the center of gravity of the footing and the center of gravity of the load from the column coincide at the same point so for that the center of gravity of load from the property line should be at a distance x which comes as 1.27 meter from the property line now with respect to that we will provide the width so according to that required length of the footing will be 2.54 meter the total length and that will be 8.40 feet and let us provide this will be the provided length now you can simply provide this length and for now we can consider this as a 3 we get 9.90 feet and so with this length of the footing the required width of the footing will be 2.21 meter so either you can increase the length to reduce the width of the footing or you can go with the this uh, length that is 3 and 2.21 so keeping this as 3.5 you get the length width of the footing as 1.90 3.6 we get 1.85 so so for now let us consider the length of the footing as 3.65 meter and width of the footing as 1.282 meter and that gives the projection from the center line of the column b to the edge of the footing as 1.55 meter that is 5.10 feet now the next thing is to compute the thickness of the footing required and the reinforcement so for that considering factor load of 
column A. So we'll just simply multiply with the 1.5. We'll get factor load for both of the column and we can compute the swell pressure based on the area and per unit length. So we'll just uh, multiply the net upward pressure by the width then we can compute the net upward swell pressure per unit length. Now maximum shear force at center line of column A, a V1, V2, V1, V2. So for column A and column B and point of zero shear. So obviously there exists a point of zero shear. So computing the length where the point of zero shear occurs that is X. So it comes as 1.45 meter and maximum bending moment computed from left side. So from the left side and maximum bending moment computed from the right side. So according to this bending moment that is absolute of this two. So we'll compute for 333. We can get the depth required using this formula that is BM that is bending moment is equal to 0.133 FCK BD square. So we get effective depth as 258 mm. So for shear criteria we'll provide a greater value. So for now let us assume the overall depth as 550 mm. Or we can also go as 500 mm or even 450 mm. We'll check that whether it is uh, uh, sufficient or not. So let us compute the main negative longitudinal reinforcement. So this is from the IS code IS456 NXG. So there is a simple formula that uh, is moment is equal to 0.87 FY something like that. So we are just swapping the value of LHS and RHS and we get this formula. So substitute this for the maximum bending moment and this depth. So we'll get area of steel required as 2064 mm square. Converting this in mm square per meter. So for now B is simply in this case we have kept B as 1.82. So we are just converting that into per meter. So we'll get 1135 mm square per meter. So to satisfy this we have to provide a bar size of 16 mm bar at 150 mm center center spacing. I have kept maximum spacing of the reinforcement as 150. So for example if I provide 12 then I might require 75 mm. And if I go for 20 mm, then the reinforcement required will be greater than 150. But I have kept that the minimum spacing we will keep as 150 mm. You can change if you want that as 175. So it will be 175. Or if you don't want to consider the minimum value, you can just simply delete and provide whatever the value comes. That is 275. But there is criteria for the spacing as well. So considering that, we will keep this as 150 and let us provide 16 mm bar so we get provided area of steel as 1340 mm square per meter considering 16 mm bar at 150 mm center to center spacing now we have to consider the check for one way shear so already you can see here it is not okay so we will come to that later on so what for now shear at a distance d so for one way shear obviously we will check at a distance d and using this formula so we get the shear force, maximum shear force at a distance D from the face of support as 279 kN. I have checked for this, uh, for the both columns, column A and column B. Nominal shear stress, nominal shear stress at 0.38 Newton per mm square. And tensile percentage, steel percentage comes as 0.34, that is 16 mm bar at 150. So shear strength of M20 concrete and 0.34 percentage is steel. So you can either compute this value from table 19 of IS456 or simply use this formula from SP16 that is tau C from the shear and torsion. So I've used this formula. We get shear strength at 0.41 Newton per mm square and this value is greater than that of the nominal shear stress. So it is okay. But the same thing if we check for column B, the nominal shear stress comes at 0.43 Newton per mm square while shear strength of the concrete is 0.41 Newton per mm square only. So obviously it is not safe. Either you can provide shear reinforcement or you can even increase the size of the longitudinal reinforcement or you can provide a greater depth of the footing whichever is more economical for example if i provide 20 mm bar so the reinforcement that is the tensile reinforcement percentage will increase and obviously the shear strength of the concrete will increase but it is better to provide a greater depth in case of the shear failure so considering 16 mm bar and a greater depth for example 500 so 500 mm is sufficient 0 0.39 0 0.37 so this is okay so check for one way shear is done the next thing is check two way shear so we have to consider ks and basically beta c will be one and we'll get the value of tau c that simply 
Ks into under root Fck. So for now Fck is 20. So we'll get 1.12 Newton per mm square. Now shear value for column A. This comes as 443 kilo Newton. And the nominal shear stress is 0.26 Newton per mm square. So this acts in a periphery. So I've already uploaded a video. You can find all the uh, concept regarding the design in that video. But for this video, I'm just showing how to use this Excel sheet only. This is less than that of the shear, of, uh, shear strength of the concrete. So this is okay. Now for column B also, we'll compute. And this comes at 0.30 Newton per mm square, which is less than 1.12 Newton per mm square. So this is also okay. So the footing is safe for two-way shear as well as one-way shear. Now positive longitudinal reinforcement at bottom. So this is the reinforcement that will be provided at the top. Bending moment at face of column A. So again, this is the uh, moment calculation. And we using this formula for this moment, we'll get the area of steel required that is 1647 per mm square per meter. And generally this is less than that of the reinforcement required at top. So, and minimum area of steel required is 0.12 percentage of BD and this comes as 1092 mm square converting this into per meter we get 600 mm square per meter and generally the size of the longitudinal bar at top and bottom is provided as same so I have just uh, provided this value or link to the value of the reinforcement that will be provided at the top that is 16 mm bar so automatically you will get 16 mm bar or you can also go for 12 mm bar if you are interested with it if you are interested to provide a smaller section size but for now let us keep this as 16 mm bar that is equal to the top reinforcement so the provided area still will be 1005 mm square per meter we'll keep this as 150 here also so 1340 mm square per meter so this is also okay transverse reinforcement so this is just as a temperature reinforcement so we'll provide minimum area of steel that is 0.12 percentage of gross area of concrete so this comes as 600 mm square per meter and we'll provide 12 mm bar and the spacing is computed on basis of the reinforcement required and this comes as 150 mm per uh, mm center to center spacing so in this way the reinforcement is computed and finally we'll get the summary that is grade of concrete to be used is m20 grade of steel is fe500 and the dimension is 3.65 meter by 1.82 meter that is 12 feet by 6 feet and dimensioning of the thickness is 500 mm with 16 mm bar at 150 mm center to center as longitudinal bars at top and bottom and will provide a 12 mm bar at 150 mm center to center spacing as the transverse reinforcement so in this way the design is done in this excel sheet and simply we'll copy this and paste it in the report so generally we'll provide a sample design in the report that is the sample design of combined footing for now so simply paste it over here so your report for the sample design of the footing is done i hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment in the video and share with your friends and if you want this access just request for the access from the link provided in the description thank you